Hello, thanks for joining us for Reporters, the programme that brings you the very best stories from our correspondents around the world. Today we're in rural Vietnam where Agent Orange was used by US forces to clear vegetation in an attempt to expose guerrillas during the Vietnam War. Now, during this time, millions of gallons of this toxic defoliant was sprayed over central Vietnam, killing and maiming many thousands of local farmers, villagers and their children. Now, more than three decades on, the effects are still being felt. Every year, thousands of children are still being born severely handicapped. Our correspondents have been to meet those battling not only chronic disability, but the US authorities too, as they wait for financial compensation. We are at Hue Hospital in central Vietnam. In the pediatrics department, doctors have just placed dozens of newborn babies under observation. The children in this department are all suffering from serious illnesses. This baby is suffering from hydroencephalitis. He has water compressing his brain. His mother gave birth here and then abandoned him, leaving him with just a name. The two children over there have also been abandoned. The one on the right is five months old and is also suffering from hydroencephalitis. Encephalitis, congenital malformations and leukemia. The head of this department handles over 1,700 of these cases in children per year. There is no doubt in his mind that all these illnesses are linked to the Vietnam War. All of these children with congenital diseases come from central Vietnam, one of the regions that received the most Agent Orange during the war. And that's where all the parents of these children live. Agent Orange is a powerful herbicide that was used extensively by the U.S. Army during the Vietnam War. Thirty-five years on, this chemical continues to wreak havoc. It's useless to marry to have children like this. The future of my daughter has already been decided. It will not last long. It's a bit like starting all over again from scratch. Between 1961 and 1971, more than 80 million litres of Agent Orange were dumped on the country's forests. This chemical is a defoliant intended to strip the leaves from trees in order to prevent the Viet Cong soldiers from hiding in the jungle. During the war, I was a soldier in the mountains of the Hue region. The US C-130s dumped products, but at the time we didn't know what. They sprayed in the morning, and in the afternoon the leaves of the trees fell to the ground. We were on patrol, and we were all covered in liquid. Dead fish floated to the surface of rivers. We had to eat, so we ate the dead fish, but we didn't know what this was. Today, this former Viet Cong soldier suffers from bone cancer. In total, nearly five million people were directly affected by Agent Orange. Dioxin, the chemical contained in Agent Orange, degrades very slowly in nature. For 15 years, Fung Tu Boy has been conducting research on the contamination of the area. This place is the most contaminated by dioxin in all of Vietnam. On this map, we've marked out three zones, A, B and C, and here we are on zone B. Nothing on this land can grow except for American grass. Access to this area must be denied, because if cows eat this contaminated grass, dioxin re-enters the food chain. According to this expert, it will take a century for the dioxin levels present in the soil to disappear. Farming families living in the area are directly exposed. Uh, this lady was a victim of Agent Orange during the war, and because of this she's given birth to children who are deaf and dumb. Her children eat some of the fish caught in the surrounding rivers. In this highly contaminated area, agriculture is impossible. 
We tried to grow potatoes and manioc without success. A few leaves appeared, but never came to anything. It's very strange. There are fruits, but no seeds inside. During the war, the spraying of Agent Orange was intense in the south and center of the country. It was at Da Nang Airport that the American troops stored and loaded the defoliant into their aircrafts before spraying the forests. Fan Tan Tien was born after the war. He is in charge of an association for Agent Orange victims. He wants to show us this former U.S. base. This is the airport of Da Nang. It's where the U.S. stored their cans of dioxin, and a little further away is where they cleaned the aircraft tanks filled with Agent Orange. The place is closed to the public because the levels of dioxin here are 300 to 400 times higher than internationally accepted limits. The level of dioxin is very strong. When it rains, the smell is unbearable. You can see that no plant can grow here. It is as if the ground had been burnt. This soil is being studied in Vietnamese laboratories. So far, scientists have not found any quick solutions to remove the dioxin from the soil. It's a long process. We tested 3,384 cubic meters of contaminated land that we mixed with microorganisms such as fungi. The fungi digested the dioxin. In three years, 55 percent of the dioxin disappeared from the land that we'd sampled. We have to use the least costly methods because we have very few means. The lack of resources is the main obstacle to research and development. In humans, dioxin attacks the genes. Even today, thousands of children are born severely handicapped. The Fan Tan Tien Association tries to relieve families by taking care of sick children. Come a little closer like this, and you can eat better. There, it's better like that. These two children are brothers and sisters. They're 19 and 20 years of age. The family lives in the next province and is very poor. Their parents locked them up at home in order to go to work. They couldn't live. For 20 years before coming here, these children had never had contact with the outside world. This support center helps victims with very few resources. Rehabilitation of children is provided by volunteers. There is no health care professional. This is the physiotherapy room. They come here to exercise three times a week. All of the equipments were provided by foreign NGOs. This equipment allows children to recover some of their motor skills. Today, 1,000 centers like this are needed to treat 150,000 child victims of Agent Orange. Nevertheless, very few Vietnamese have expressed their resentment. Phan Tan Tien never names the Americans for fear of damaging relations between the two countries. I'm lucky to have been born after the war. Of course, I'm angry, but it's in the past. I have no hatred and you should know that the Vietnamese people have none either. Because we were able to forget, even if the consequences are terrible for the dioxin victims. But the focus must be on the present. Today, the psychological impact on parents of child victims of dioxin is very significant. This woman's two children are suffering from congenital diseases. Without resources and support, she can no longer cope. I'm trying to relieve their pain a little. I sit for hours beside them, but as soon as I move, they scream. One day, my son asked me why I brought him into the world, to be in this situation, saying that it is because of me that he is like this, making me feel even worse than my son's illness itself. What would you like to tell the people who made this poison? When I think about that, I get mad. But I know that I'm not the only one experiencing this, and that comforts me a little. But I'm a fatalist, so that's just the way it is. Up until the age of 15, he was fine, but now, 
I'm always at his side, watching over him. It's no life. The US government is beginning to take stock of this tragedy, but the manufacturers of Agent Orange still refuse to take responsibility. There are 30 US chemical companies that manufacture dioxin, but they never admit responsibility. Their defense is to say our products have been purchased by the US government and we are not responsible for their use. We cannot take the US government to court, so we seek a more amicable solution. The victims themselves are still waiting for financial compensation from the US. 35 years after the end of the war, Agent Orange continues to kill in Vietnam. Well, that's it for this edition of Reporters. You can watch this story and all our other reports again on our website. That's france24.com. Until next time, bye for now.